Remember that first time you entered a maze of dark corridors, heart pounding at the eerie echoing sound effects, your trigger finger perched over that space bar, ready to unleash hell on the approaching demonic beast. The first time you experienced that sudden surge of adrenaline in a game? Yes, we're talking about doom. Oh man, those corridors. You're jogging my memory now, Robert. And it wasn't just any game. It was doom, the birth of first-person shooters. The fear, the excitement. It was like nothing we'd ever seen before. Indeed, the dark corridors, the eerie music and sudden monster encounters. That combo, it was like a terrifying roller coaster ride drenched in pixels. A roller coaster ride that many of us gamers couldn't get enough of. There was just something about those monstrous foes charging at you that got the adrenaline pumping like never before. Isn't it amazing how an old fashioned, pixelated game like Doom could invoke such powerful emotions? Absolutely. And it wasn't just the terrifying foes or the thrill of surviving. It was the dread, the knowledge that at any moment something could jump out from the darkness. Remember how Doom transformed our gaming experience with its 3D graphics? Yes, it was a whole new realm where things suddenly had depth and form. The walls weren't just flat surfaces anymore. And remember those character sprites? Oh, how could we forget? The sprite-based characters were something else. The amount of detailing on the monsters was just... superb. But I am a little fuzzy on the technical side. Christopher, could you enlighten us on how they achieved this groundbreaking visualisation? Certainly, Chalen. The key advancement was Doom's engine, ID Tech 1. It brought significant improvements in real-time 3D rendering, incorporating things like variable light levels and texture mapping. The engine didn't technically render in full 3D, and the levels were essentially a 2D grid viewed from a 3D perspective. But the result was a convincing, immersive 3D experience, miles ahead of anything we'd seen at that time. Truly a game-changer, no pun intended. You know what else fascinated me? Despite being technically simple by today's standards, the pixel art style and handcrafted sprites added so much to that gritty doom atmosphere we all loved. Absolutely, Robert. It's incredible to think such early tech could produce something so artistically brilliant. It was that bit of grit and those unexpected shocks that really made Doom the experience it was, don't you agree? No doubt, Chalen. Doom wouldn't have been Doom without its revolutionary use of 3D graphics, and as we now see, it paved the way for the amazing gaming graphics we see today. Christopher, can you tell us more about Doom's engine, ID Tech One? How did it bring the game's world to life? Sure, Robert. ID Tech One was truly groundbreaking at the time. Unlike previous engines that had a very linear and static approach, ID Tech One allowed game developers to create a more dynamic, almost lifelike 3D world. It supported variable light and texture levels, which in simple terms means it allowed for different levels of brightness and detail across different parts of the game. How did that contribute to the actual gameplay, Christopher? Great question, Chalen. By introducing these capabilities, it allowed the developers to create game environments that were more immersive, engaging, and real. For instance, they could change the lighting to set the mood, make certain areas darker for added suspense, or adjust the level of detail in different parts of the games to create a perception of depth. Remember the dark, looming corridors of the Mars base? Wow, so it's like... The engine was almost another character in the game, setting the scene and intensifying the player's experience. Exactly, Robert. The game's engine played a huge role in setting its tone, texture, and feel. It's why Doom's world felt so real and why it had such an impact on all of us. It's fascinating to think how such early tech set the bar so high, forever altering the course of gaming. Thinking back, we can't ignore the artistic approach that Doom took. There's a distinct pixelated quality to the game that hasn't been forgotten. So, the pixel art. It has a certain charm to it, doesn't it? Considering this was a time before high-end graphics cards and realistic rendering, the designers had to work with limitations. The game's visuals still resonate, even after all these years. True, Robert. It was the way the developers maximized the potential of their medium. They took something that could have been a limitation and instead turned it into an asset. It's interesting to think about, isn't it? 
Given the technology back then, how did they create the sprites and pixel art to achieve such an immersive effect? That's a great question, Chalin. I remember hearing that the sprites were actually based on clay models and action figures, photographed and then digitized. So there's this hybrid of real-world craft and digital adaptation, which is rather unique. And it was this handcrafted approach to sprite design that added another layer of charm to the game. It gave Doom a visual identity distinct from other games of the era. However, presenting the dark and ominous world with this art style helped balance the graphic violence in the game. Indeed, it's amazing how a game with such humble, pixelated presentation was able to create a believable, frightening world that we all remember so clearly. Let's not forget the enigmatic Doom Guy, folks. This silent, stone-faced protagonist certainly had a character charm that was remarkably memorable. What are your thoughts, Christopher? Well, Robert, what made Doom Guy stand out was not just his look, but his role as a lone hero in a sci-fi horror hellscape. It wasn't about dialogue or intricate storylines, but about that feeling of being thrown into the deep end against hordes of demonic enemies. Exactly. It wasn't what he said, but what he did. The energy and dedication he showed while confronting those demonic entities truly created a distinct universe and significantly contributed to Doom's atmospheric horror feel. And I think it's that facing his fear, that survivor's style conveyed through gameplay that got us so hooked onto Doom Guy. He's up against the worst of the worst, gun in hand, no one by his side, and he just keeps going. That's spot on, Robert. I recall how the heart-pounding gameplay of Doom marked a departure from static scenarios we've seen before in games. Suddenly, you had to strategize, adapt, and most importantly, survive. It is intriguing. When you think about it, Doom Guy and the demonic enemies are in a way symbols of our own fears. The game allowed us to conquer those fears, even if it was just inside a computer screen. So, continuing with the gameplay... I think we all can concur that Doom introduced an entrancing pace, don't you think? Yes, Robert. The game was a breakthrough. It was relentlessly fast-paced, yet flawlessly executed. Deftly peppered with high-risk and reward situations, Doom was sure a master class. Doom's fast, hit-and-run playstyle was an adrenaline rush. Agreed, Christopher. The game's array of weapon options was another essential element, right? It wasn't just about shooting but assessing the best weapon for particular enemy types and situations. Right. It's not just about blasting away with the shotgun, but about knowing when to swap to the rocket launcher or plasma rifle. It was an invigorating blend of strategy and action. The gameplay was indeed a part of the thrill, but the intensity was underpinned by the constant life-or-death decisions. It was like chess with hell-spawned pawns. Ah, oh, that's an apt comparison. The developers ensured every choice counted, whether it was choosing a weapon, picking up health packs, or deciding whether to fight or flee. Every decision could either lead to survival or a gruesome doom. That urgency and pressure, it was a new experience in gaming. Those moments of carefully traversing haunted halls, the amplified eeriness, it truly was a game-changing era. The gameplay of Doom, its relentless pace and intense strategic battles, redefined the boundaries of the gaming industry and left an indelible mark on our memories. All right, let's chat about the level design of Doom. The layout and design of each level was its own puzzle, each unique and suspenseful, with its own set of challenges. I thought it was so thrilling how I had to figure out how to maneuver through each level while dealing with the relentless onslaught of enemies. Thoughts? From a sociological perspective, the level design in Doom wasn't just about architecture, but a labyrinthine mind game. Packed with secret rooms, risky pits and teleporters, it truly exemplified the phrase, kill or be killed. Oh, speaking of that, it's interesting to consider that although multiple paths were offered, players were invariably drawn to the monster closets. These areas opened up abruptly upon players snatching power-ups or flipping switches, revealing hidden monsters. Yes, exactly. And I remember being frustrated by certain levels, but having that sweet feeling of achievement when I finally navigated my way through. Each level was a story, a battle in itself. Didn't you feel that too while playing? 
Of course, Robert. But I think the genius aspect was that the developers kept the levels visually consistent, adding a sense of realism and atmosphere. The texture choices, placement of items, the lighting. Everything played into the immersive setting, driving you deeper into the game's narrative. And let's not forget how the level design directly impacted the gameplay. The strategic placement of enemies and bottlenecks upped the tension, making every turn a high-risk decision. It was all such an impressive achievement, taking into account the technological limitations they had at the time. That's true, Christopher. Each level of Doom, with its unique challenges and design aspects, was a testament to the level of detail and creativity the creators put into the game, ensuring an adrenaline-filled gaming experience that kept us hooked. The way these levels were designed, it makes it hard to believe that the game was released over 25 years ago. All right, moving on to another astounding innovation that Doom introduced, networked multiplayer gaming. Remember how extraordinary it felt when you realized you could play Doom with a friend over a network? Absolutely, Robert. Doom was certainly one of the pioneers in multiplayer gaming. The introduction of networked multiplayer gaming was nothing short of revolutionary. It essentially delivered a new way of experiencing video games, bringing a whole new level of competition and cooperation. Christopher, as our resident tech expert, can you explain how they made it work at a time when online gaming was virtually unheard of? Sure, Robert. Although I don't know the nitty-gritty details of their coding, I know that Doom utilized IPXE SPX protocol for network play, a popular networking protocol at the time, which was then bridged to TCP EIP, the backbone of modern internet. Multiplayer modes like Deathmatch and Cooperative were introduced, allowing friends to either work together or compete against each other in the same game worlds. I have to admit it's fascinating how a game from that era was so forward-thinking. I remember hearing about Deathmatches back then. It was sort of a milestone, wasn't it? Indeed, Chalen. It was momentous. Deathmatch was a new concept that Doom popularized immensely. This innovation not only changed the way we experienced games, but also formed the basis for many online gaming aspects we see today. And if I remember correctly, Doom also introduced us to modding tools, right? I think it was the first game that allowed us to create our own levels and share them with the community, giving us a creative outlet and extending the game's longevity. You're right, Robert. Doom did provide tools that allowed the community to modify the game creating their own levels or mods, even spawning a dedicated modding community. These modifications ranged from entirely new levels, mechanics, to graphical overhauls. Basically, the player's imagination was their limit. This user-generated content, again, was something quite novel and ahead of its time. So if you think about it, Doom not only changed how we experience games, but also kind of democratized the game development by empowering players with these modding tools. It's almost like the players, the community, could become creators. Participating in the game's evolution and narrative, it's truly remarkable. Changing course, let's talk about modding tools in Doom. Correct me if I'm wrong, Christopher. Weren't modding tools first introduced by Doom? Robert, you've got it spot on. Doom was one of the earliest games to embrace and cater to fan modding. They released the Doom editing utility which allowed players to create their own maps for the game. It was a significant step in fostering a dedicated Doom community. That sounds cool, Christopher. It must have been exciting for players to be able to modify their favorite game. Was it easy to create these mods? Well, Robert, it depended on how complex you wanted your modifications to be. Simple map changes could be tackled by everyday users, but the creation of comprehensive mods needed a bit more technical knowledge. Regardless, it was a huge step toward letting gamers contribute to their favorite titles. Fascinating. It's as if the creators were welcoming input and creativity from their fans. Christopher, were these mods popular with the community? Definitely, Chalen. Some mods were so popular that they took on a life of their own. They extended the game's lifespan and added depth and variety to the Doom experience. The best part was that they kept the community active even years after the game was released. Even though I didn't really play Doom, I can imagine the sense of satisfaction gamers must have felt when creating their own mods. It adds a whole new level of personalization to the game. Yes, 
indeed, Chalen. And we're still seeing that trend continue. Even games today are providing platforms to fans to create their own mods. It all started with Doom and has played a significant role in shaping the gaming culture, turning active players into active contributors. I recall the joy of sharing and exploring mods with the community. It really was an innovative approach by the developers, and it definitely added another layer of excitement to the Doom experience. Let's confront the elephant in the room. The much-debated aspect of Doom, its graphic violence. Doom provided an immersive and intense experience, built around the concept of confronting and fighting demonic foes. However, its gruesome imagery attracted controversy, provoking countless debates. Yes, I remember the backlash. Many saw it as gory and highly violent, considering the amount of bloodshed in the game. People worried about its influence on gamer behavior. What's your opinion, Christopher? Can a game's violence truly lead to violent actions in real life? That's a hard one, Robert. It's simplistic to argue that games directly lead to real-world violence. There are multiple factors that can influence a person's behaviors. Games, in my view, can only be one part of a broader context. It's critical, however, that we consider the impact of graphic content on various age groups. I suppose the game faced its share of censorship attempts following this controversy. Indeed, Chalin. Some countries did try to put restrictions on Doom because of its violence, but paradoxically the controversy only heightened the curiosity and demand among gamers. Absolutely, Robert. The authenticity of the game, its portrayals of violence in my perspective, was necessary to the game's horrific atmosphere and not added for gratuitous shock value. Doom pushed the boundaries and challenged the status quo, a hallmark of revolutionary products. We've been oscillating around the subject of Doom's violence. Notably, its graphic portrayal, visceral texture, it all pushed the envelope on what was considered acceptable in a game. Does this violence portray the creator's intent or merely highlight the game's technical capabilities? Doom certainly didn't pull any punches with its depiction of violence, Christopher. Especially for that time, it was quite impactful. Though, I don't entirely agree about the violence being just about technical capabilities. Rather, I feel it was more about creating an immersive and horrifying environment. No doubt, Robert, but from a technical aspect, creating such lifelike carnage must have been a challenge, correct? Considering the games before Doom, quite a leap was taken. You're right, Christopher. And that very depiction of gore, that leap of technology somehow got caught in the crossfire of societal debates. Aligning with the question you posed earlier, Robert, it's intriguing to ponder whether it influenced violent behaviours. Kind of like a chicken and egg situation, isn't it? Did the game incite violence, or did it merely reflect the violence already present in society? Well said, Chalin. That's a perspective I never considered. Sometimes it's overlooked that art and media are mirrors to our society. They highlight what's happening around us, even when it's unpleasant. Exactly, Robert. Also, the restrictions that came in the wake of Doom's release, notably censorship attempts. It's interesting how when things become forbidden, they tend to garner more attention. Robert, is it accurate to say these controversies contributed to Doom's fame? Partly yes, Chalin. The controversies did amplify Doom's visibility, making it somewhat of a taboo delight for many. It's funny, though, these were the very aspects that defined Doom, made it the cult favourite it is today. So we've discussed about Doom's groundbreaking graphics, its revolutionary gameplay, and, of course, the controversies that were catalysts for attention. But there's something more. Its reach was not confined within the confines of gaming. Doom has left a significant cultural impact. Do you see that too? Certainly, Robert. This was no ordinary game. The Doom mania that you just pointed out truly made waves in pop culture. The game even got mentions in popular TV shows, music tracks, not to mention the array of merchandise it inspired. Let's not forget the Doom comic book. The game had certainly stepped out of the virtual world to cement its place in our culture. Yes, from t-shirts and posters to album covers and even referenced in other games, Doom was everywhere. I remember there were bands releasing Doom-themed albums. The game seemed to define a whole generation of pop culture. Doom was more than just a game phenomenon. 
It was a cultural phenomenon. It was. Now that you're saying it, I recall major artists incorporating doom into lyrics, album art, even as themes for their music videos. Movies, too. It made appearances in films, both directly and indirectly. I remember watching The Rock movie, where Sean Connery actually played the game. Oh, right. I remember that scene. Doesn't that just show how deeply Doom penetrated into our society? And beyond that, the gaming community. They took Doom to another level themselves. Remember the countless player modifications? The exhaustive fan arts, the fan songs? Doom had indeed become a cultural symbol in its own right. Kids wanted to be Doom Guy for Halloween. It was referenced in schoolyard talks. Anything and everything around us suddenly had a Doom association. That's the kind of cultural impact Doom had. It's quite incredible to see how it got woven into our collective cultural fabric. Talk about a game transcending beyond its realm. Despite the controversies, there's no denying that Doom, with its unmatched gameplay and cultural impact, became a legend in the world of video games. You know, Doom even had its presence in the music industry. It had appeared in lyrics of songs or as part of the album art. Really? Do elaborate on that, Christopher. Sure, Robert. There are several examples, but one that leaps to mind is the American thrash metal band Slayer. They had a song called Behind the Crooked Cross, which was featured in Doom. In fact, the entire gaming soundtrack was influenced by heavy metal music, primarily Metallica and Pantera. Plus, the game was referenced in several rap songs, solidifying its place in popular music culture. Not just music, even television had its fair share of Doom references. I mean, it was pretty hard to miss it given the game's massive presence. Yes, that's true, Chalen. It wasn't uncommon to see characters in sitcoms or drama series playing Doom on their PCs. It somehow made the characters feel more cool and trendy. After all, they were part of the Doom mania too. And let's not forget, Doom even made its way to Hollywood. I mean, we've already touched upon this. Remember the movie The Rock? That had a scene where Connery was playing Doom. Then, of course, there was the Doom movie as well. Indeed, Christopher. Even other video games made references to Doom. In Wolfenstein The New Order, a secret level featuring a classic Doom level was included which echoed its legacy. So it's fair to say, then, that Doom was not just a game, it was a cultural symbol. Its influence pervaded not just gaming, but music, TV, films, and even, as you pointed out, Chalin, other games. Quite amazing, isn't it? You know, as we reflect on everything we've discussed so far, it makes me realise just what an immense legacy Doom has left behind. It has, in a sense, set the bar high for what we now perceive as standard in our gaming experiences. It's true, Robert. It's not just about the dazzling graphics or the adrenaline-fueled gameplay. The real essence of Doom's legacy is the standard it set for technological innovation in the gaming world. The ID Tech One engine, the multiplayer functionality, the modding tools. Doom was pioneering in all these aspects. Yet alongside that, it's the cultural significance that allows Doom to endure. From its prominence in music and films to other games, Doom managed to break the confines of its digital world and took a life of its own in popular culture. That's rare even today. Looking back, it's amazing to think how a game like Doom, presented in pixel art and produced in the early 90s, could inspire an entire genre of first-person shooters. I wonder, Christopher, how much of today's gaming landscape do you think has been directly influenced by Doom? Doom has undeniably influenced the landscape of video games, Robert. Its groundbreaking graphics and open-ended gameplay pushed developers to experiment more and more. These innovations laid the groundwork for today's gaming industry. More than that, Doom inspired a generation of developers by showing what's possible in an interactive medium. And yet, in spite of all these advancements, Doom still manages to hold a special place in our hearts. It might be the nostalgia talking, or it could be the fact that Doom, with its simple yet engaging gameplay, resonates with our primal instincts. You're right about that, Chalin. There's something about evoking that adrenaline-filled gaming session, battling demonic enemies in a sci-fi horror setting. It's a feeling of accomplishment that few games have managed to recreate since Doom, and that perhaps is the biggest testament to its enduring legacy.
It's incredible to think how, after nearly 30 years, Doom still manages to make your heart pound. The fear, the thrill, the urgency of battling those demonic foes. Isn't it captivating? Absolutely. You know, Robert, it's not just the challenging gameplay, it's the feel of accomplishment when you finally complete the game. It's that satisfying sigh of relief mixed with the sweet taste of victory. That's nostalgia at its best. That's what makes Doom timeless. It's a prime example of how the simplicity of thought, yet the mastery of execution, can create legendary gaming moments. The technological advancements are there to see, yes, but having that feeling of accomplishment. That's not just technological brilliance. That's an artistic masterpiece. I couldn't agree more, Christopher. It's also about that moment when you confront the final boss, when you're at the edge of your seat, strategizing, grinding, battling it out. Your heart's racing, the music's pumping. And when you land that final hit, the rush, the exhilaration, it's simply incomparable. The euphoria is all too real. Every pulse, every heartbeat intertwined with the rhythm of the game. Doom managed to make you step into the shoes of Doom Guy, feeling every action, every emotion the character had to go through. The intensity, the dread, the ultimate triumph. It's fascinating how Doom managed to make such an emotional connection. That's the beauty of this game. It captivates you, immerses you, and gives you a nostalgic dose of adrenaline like no other.